Dr. Disrespect has finally broken his silence in regards to his Twitch ban, but we still don't know exactly the reason he was banned in the first place. So I'm here today to analyze everything that's happened so far, and the pensive and reserved way he's answering questions, and try to figure out just what the hell that video he posted really means. Let's get into this. Okay, so before we get into all this Dr. Disrespect stuff, I've got to remind you to give us a follow over at twitch.tv slash thescoreesports. When this doc news first broke, we actually went live on our talk show Clouded to talk about the news and break it down on Twitch. So if you don't want to miss that kind of stuff or any of the other cool stuff we're doing on Twitch, make sure you're following. So like many of esports' greatest mysteries, this whole situation started with one slasher tweet. And he's of course known for breaking news in the gaming and streaming world. On June 26 at 4.22 p.m. Eastern Time, Slasher tweeted that Dr. Disrespect had been banned from Twitch permanently. And so given the fact that Doc is one of the biggest streamers on the planet and he hadn't walked into any bathrooms recently, people were understandably shocked. Of course, this all happened amidst the slew of sexual assault allegations that have been happening in the esports and gaming world over the last month or so. I actually did a video trying to compile all the parts of that story last week. Naturally, as the news cycle works, Doc got caught up in that, and people were speculating on Twitter that his ban could be related. Which to me is kind of like the natural way of Twitter, drawing comparisons when there's nothing to go off of, but... As far as I'm concerned, it's a pretty unfair position to put Doc in with absolutely zero information about the subject. A lot of people were also speculating about Doc's last stream and how sort of eerie and unnerving those last few minutes were. D David Icke. I ordered his book too. Yeah, I want to it. No bad. Oh, the backyard, the backyard. I appreciate everyone watching today. We'll, we'll get we'll get through this Champions Club. Uh, it's, yeah, I know it's a tough. T that's, life's weird right now. I. We'll we'll get through this, okay? And. Uh, Now that clip, coupled with his strange tangent about conspiracy theorist David Icke, someone who's been accused of being anti-Semitic for years, led some people to believe that this could just be a symptom of Twitch's three strikes and you're out rule. Doc's been banned before, and now speaking about someone who's been accused of anti-Semitism in the past, well, maybe this was just the final strike in Twitch's eyes. Something that our very own Colin McNeil brought up when we were talking about the situation a couple weeks ago on our talk show, Clouded. Basically, Doc, in the last little part of his last stream was talking about how he wa watched a Netflix documentary on a gentleman called David Icke. And then he, then Doc proceeded to kind of um, paint David Icke in a, in, in a favorable light and say things to the effect of, you know, it's about expanding your mind or looking at truth or waking up and he's kind of cool, you should check him out. And I, I bought his book and I liked his documentary and I kind of dig the guy, right? It was along those lines. And then there was the strangely obvious guess that this could all be a publicity stunt. Because let's be real here, that's completely in Doc's range. There is no fucking way that this is a publicity stunt. Like, let me just say that again, there's no fucking way. Like, to do this, at this time in the social zeitgeist with the movements that are happening now would be the worst calculated marketing ploy in recent memory. With all speculation aside, the coming days after Slasher's original tweet really made this feel a lot more severe than your average Twitch ban. I mean, let's be real here. It's my job to pay attention to who gets banned on Twitch, but this felt a little different than your average terms of service violation. Just a day later on June 27th, news began to circle that Doc's subscribers were being refunded, his Discord partnership had been revoked, and his wife finally made a statement on her Instagram thanking his supporters. And in case you didn't know, normally when someone gets banned on Twitch, they don't go so far as to start refunding subscribers. That's kind of out of the ordinary. There were also reports that Doc's emotes were unable to be used in Twitch channels and Twitch staffers were being told to go back through their social media archives and delete all the references to Dr. Disrespect. Remember, this is a guy that signed a massive multi-million dollar contract to stream exclusively on Twitch 
just a few months ago. To my recollection, there have only been a few other bans on Twitch that have been handled this way, where they're literally refunding subscribers. We're talking names like Ice Poseidon, Zillion OP, and Phantom Lord, who are basically the upper brass of being perma-banned on Twitch. Now, while all this was going down, Doc stayed quiet on all platforms, until around 10 p.m. on June 27th, when he tweeted this. Champions Club, Twitch has not notified me on the specific reason behind their decision. Firm handshakes to all for the support during this difficult time. Dr. Disrespect. Notably the fact that Doc wasn't notified by Twitch about the specific reason as to why he was banned doesn't mean that he doesn't have any theories. Often people get notified that they violate TOS when they get banned from Twitch, but they don't get told the specific reason why. You see it on Twitter all the time, streamers who got banned and they're basically guessing the reason for the ban. I mean, it could be a good thing or a bad thing, but it's been going on like this for years. And so that's how this whole situation started. One of Twitch's biggest names banned, and everyone looking to Twitter, Slasher, and Doc for an explanation. But all they actually found was this. Slasher has claimed that he knows the reason for the ban, but due to a fear of putting his sources in a bad position and trying to figure out the full story before he says anything, he hasn't shared it with us. Which again, and this is coming from someone who is also a reporter, caused people to believe that this could be a pretty severe issue. I mean, Slasher breaks like a lot of news. Something would have to really go wrong for him to not want to share it. And during that first wave of news, that's pretty much all we got as far as understanding this doc situation. Until this week, when the topic of Slasher finally revealing that information resurfaced on Hassan's stream, where he was a guest. And he said that he was looking for legal indemnity from a media outlet so that he could publish it. I don't want to put it personally on Twitter, and I do need a publication to back me, but this requires indemnity that I want, and that has been rather difficult to acquire, and that means that I get legal protection from uh, the outlet that I publish for. So yes, a defamation suit um, is very, you don't is at the high point justice. of concern you for me and father. other journalists. Basically, he told Hassan that the situation was pretty murky, and for fear of legal repercussions, he was looking for a media outlet to protect him legally as a freelancer in exchange for letting them publish the information. And that was a topic that we also talked about over on Twitch on Clouded this week. What Slasher is saying, He's looking for indemnity, which indemnity means like legal protection, basically. Essentially, not like a, he, basically what he's saying is that I want an outlet, whatever that outlet might be, to have their legal team be ready to have a defense for me, essentially, or for us as the entity publishing it. Slasher also alleged that Twitch has undergone their own investigation to find out who leaked the information to him in the first place. Like I can say, from what I've heard, Twitch has been doing a massive internal investigation since everything happened the day that I reported that Dr. Spec was permanently banned. And then just yesterday, Doc broke his silence again when he decided to do brief interviews with both The Washington Post and PC Gamer. Both interviews basically include the same carefully crafted statements, but I'm gonna read some of those for you now. He stayed pretty consistent with the fact that Twitch has not identified to him what the reason for his ban was when he was talking to The Washington Post. Quote, honestly, we just don't know. It was a total shock. Imagine showing up to work and the doors are closed and you can't get inside. You're going, what's going on? And you've been told that you've been fired, but you haven't been told the reason why. We just weren't given an answer. It was the worst feeling." End quote. And when asked by PC Gamer about all the speculations regarding the reason for his ban, he said, quote, Listen, I'm not interested in engaging crazy speculation. I've seen all the theories, I've seen all the possible conspiracies, and it's just like, I'm just not interested in engaging that type of stuff. I have a great community of loyal fans, and I'm totally focused on getting back and delivering great, entertaining content, and that's where the focus is. End quote. Maybe the most staggering part of both interviews happened when PC Gamer reporter Steven Mesner asked him about his recent on-stream antics and his comments about David Icke. Doc started to answer the question, but then was immediately cut off by his publicist, who said, quote, We're getting really close to dangerous territory here. So you know, Doc, we don't know why Twitch banned him, and there is no formal warnings or reprimand on record. That's all legal is going to let him say. End quote. Doc also confirmed during the interview that his exclusive contract to stream on Twitch has ended, and that he's exploring options for streaming on platforms like YouTube or Facebook, or even on his own website. Which to me was pretty surprising, because up until this point, all we've gotten from Doc is like, radio silence. So the idea of him ever streaming again, started to feel pretty unlikely. 
When all of this first started, a streamer named Shannon Z Killer on Twitter tweeted this out, suggesting that Doc was not only done on Twitch, but done everywhere. That tweet has since been deleted. So given those initial reactions, for me, I was like, is Doc ever gonna stream again? But then yesterday, in traditional Doc fashion, he gave us the kind of teaser that suggests we'll probably see him again. It's out of my head. But I'm still in control. One minute and eight seconds, a silhouette, him in an alley, and a sports car. And all of a sudden, it feels like Dr. Disrespect is gearing up for a return after weeks of not hearing from him. I mean, look at the replies to this tweet. Some of Twitch's most famous personalities are literally cheering him on in the midst of a massive uncertain controversy. This Doc roller coaster never really seems to end. So there you have it. Everything we know up until this point about Dr. Disrespect's abrupt permanent ban from Twitch. So what do you guys think? Is Doc the streamer that never dies? Is he impossible to get rid of? Is this all just one big publicity stunt? that fooled us all, including us at the Score Esports. Let us know in the comments. All right, guys, so Colin's been doing this thing where he takes you through all of his nerdy shit on his bookshelves during end boards. So I figured I would do it. I get a lot of comments about the shoes in my background. Everyone out there, big hype beast, loving my shoe collection. A lot of things about Jordan 1s, about the off-whites, about the breads. But today I'm giving you a review, a little bit of a review. The best shoe of 2019. New Balance, no bad days, doesn't get enough love, got lots of materials, we got leather, we got colors, you know, sparks imagination, sparks joy, sparks Devin. Look, all I'm saying is in the world of, uh, in the world of shoe people, there's a lot of talk about Yeezys and Jordan 1s and Off-White and Virgil and fucking Jerry Lorenzo and shit, but Bodega, no days off or no bad days, New Balance's Best Shoe of 2019.